Hey everybody, it's Drake here. Now if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll see that I like to build laser guns. I've built several over the years, with my strongest being about 200 watts. So as you can probably imagine, I was extremely excited to hear that the Chinese developed a so-called laser AK-47. But as I started to look into things, things started getting kind of fishy. In a recent article by the South China Morning Post, a Chinese company called ZKZM Laser claims to have developed a 3 kilogram laser gun that can set objects on fire from 800 meters away. Now it's been all over the internet the past week and I've gotten tons of messages asking about the validity of this laser gun. Now burning distant objects with a laser is nothing new, but when you're doing it with a portable device that only weighs 3 kilograms and from 800 meters away, now that sounds pretty sketchy to me. So I'm going to go through a list of all the proposed claims from this company, rip them apart and seeing if what they're claiming is even remotely possible. Now the first claim is that this weapon can cause instant carbonization of skin, is completely invisible, and can patch through windows. Now this is a pretty remarkable claim if it's true. And now they don't actually cite a specific wavelength of this laser gun, but given this information we could probably figure it out. Now in layman's terms, the wavelength is essentially the specific color of the laser. So for example, 450 nanometers is a blue color, uh, 530 nanometers is a green color, and 650 nanometers is a red color. Now once you get past, say, like 800 nanometers or so, the light becomes invisible, and it's uh, because you're in the infrared regime. Now even though there's a bunch of different wavelengths that are invisible to the human eye, uh, different wavelengths have very different properties on uh, different materials. As a demonstration, I threw together this IR laser module for you guys. It's based off of a 4 watt 960 nanometer laser diode. And all this thing is actually pretty powerful for its size. Let me power it up here. Now this laser is completely invisible to the human eye, but the camera actually does pick it up a little. In fact, it's that little pink spot that you see there. Now this little laser can burn stuff. For example, it can easily light a match, it can slice through electrical tape, and it can even make plastic smoke. So what happens when I stick my hand in the beam? I actually don't feel anything at all. My flesh is essentially transparent at this wavelength. I could stick my hand in the beam all day and I'm not going to feel anything. The light just disperses through, barely absorbing it all. So clearly this wavelength would not make a good laser weapon. Now clearly a laser weapon designed to burn human flesh isn't going to be near IR. So what other kinds of lasers can both shoot through glass, be completely invisible, and also carbonize human flesh? Well, we can look through some various transmission spectra to determine that. A good benchmark on whether a laser can burn you is on how well water absorbs that wavelength, at least for lasers in the uh, IR regime. So here I have an absorption spectrum of water. And as you can see, it doesn't start absorbing strongly until it's a bit past, uh, say, 1,000 nanometers or so. Then over here I have a transmission spectrum of various glasses. And as you can tell, the, uh, it starts dropping off here past, say, about 2,000 nanometers. So that means that this uh, laser gun wavelength is probably between 1,000 and 2,000 nanometers. Now even more importantly is this uh, transmission spectrum of an eyeball. Now this is important because if the eyeball lets any amount of that light through, the laser is probably going to cause eye damage. I mean, if the laser can burn stuff, it can easily blow a hole through the retina. It doesn't matter whether it's invisible. Like even the small IR laser that I showed you earlier could just blow a hole through your eyeball in a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. It does not matter that it's invisible. In fact, uh, laser weapons that blind are banned by the Geneva Convention. So that means that the, uh, the wavelength has to be blocked by the human eye. So that suggests a wavelength of about 2,000 nanometers. Nanometers. Now I do suppose that there's a very narrow band of UV, like say from a frequency quadruple neodymium YAG laser, that can make it through some very specialty kind of glasses and get blocked by the eye. But then you're talking about efficiency that are so low that they'll never make it onto a laser gun. So why am I so concerned about the laser's wavelength? Well, That's because an issue arises when you consider another one of their claims, and that's that it's a 15 millimeter caliber weapon with a runtime of over 30 minutes. Now contrary to what you might think, laser beams do not travel perfectly straight through space. In fact, due to the wave-like nature of light, the beams are going to spread out. And using a little bit of physics, you can actually find out the best case scenario for how much a laser beam can diverge for a given beam size and uh, wavelength. And this is actually called the Rayleigh Criterion. Now technically, in theory, lasers can actually do slightly better than this if they have, say, a Gaussian beam. But in practice, even the regularly cited Rayleigh Criterion is very hard to achieve, especially for very high-powered lasers. So if we assume that this laser gun has nearly perfect optics and achieves a diffraction limited beam, then I can use the Rayleigh Criterion to calculate the best case scenario of what that beam is going to look like 800 meters away. So by plugging these values into the Rayleigh Criterion, I get an angle here, and then I can use right angle trig to come up with the beam size at that distance. And I get a beam radius of about 13 centimeters. 
Now for this laser just to feel like the sun on a sunny day, it must have a power of 53 watts, which is a lot of power, but not nearly enough to burn anything out at this distance. But then the company goes on to say this laser can burn through clothes in a split second and can light a person on fire that's wearing them. Now let's just go through exactly how plausible this is. Now cotton has an auto ignition point of 407 degrees Celsius. So if we assume that the person doesn't move at all, they're perfectly still, uh, also that there's absolutely no wind and no other sources to uh, take away the heat generated by the laser, and then also that this cotton is darker than Vanta Black, absorbs all the light going into it, then I can use the Stefan Boltzmann law to calculate the minimum amount of power it takes to light the cotton on fire. And then I get, a, uh, I get an answer of 645 watts, which in practice is way, way less than what it would take to actually light the cotton on fire. Because there are so many things that are destroying the beam as it travels over this distance. For one, you've got heat gradients that uh, are going to disperse the laser beam. You have particles in the air that are absorbing and dispersing the laser. You have gases that absorb some of the laser lights. There, there are so many things here that are uh, hurting the efficiency. So in practice, you're going to need well into the kilowatts to be lighting people's clothes on fire. Alright, let's just assume that this person wearing the darkest material in all of existence will stand perfectly still while they're slowly heated up by the laser and that they're also in the vacuum of space. Well, now what? Well, this company claims that this laser can shoot a thousand shots at two seconds each. Now, what kind of battery pack would that require? So, if we assume that this laser is 25% efficient, which is actually really good for lasers and incredibly generous for something that's portable and would require a lot of active cooling, well, then we can uh, calculate a required input power. Then with a thousand shots at two seconds each, that requires a uh, total input energy of over 5,000 kilojoules. Now assuming a uh, lithium ion energy density of 500 kilojoules per kilogram, that gives you a required battery weight of over t 10 kilograms. So that's quite a bit over the uh, three kilograms of the gun. So this is obviously a giant, giant issue. But it even gets better than this. Then they go on to claim that the laser is strong enough to burn through a gas tank and light a fire at a military airport. Now lighting liquid fuels on fire with a laser is surprisingly difficult, even for a very strong laser. It's just that these liquid fuels don't absorb much of that laser light. Now for example here I dumped a bunch of this very flammable alcohol all over the ground and I'm trying to light it with this laser. Now this laser has a much higher power density than what we calculated earlier to uh, just barely light cotton on fire. That's just because it's up close and has a very small beam. But even it can't light the fuel on fire. The fuel needs a spark of some sort to ignite it. So the laser would have to hit something else flammable to cause uh, this, this liquid to light on fire. So it's very improbable for that laser gun to be able to light a gas tank on fire. Now I could go on and on about the potential issues of a design like this. But I'm going to stop here because I think it's pretty clear that this so-called laser AK-47 is a giant load of bull crap. So that's all I have for you today. But a big thank you to all my patrons on Patreon for supporting all these projects and videos. And stay tuned for my upcoming video on my laser sniper rifle that unfortunately can't light people in fire from 800 meters away, but still can do a lot of damage for the distance. And yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing!